this is a special moment for me. This is where it all started. Uh, I won't say how many years ago, but I started as a, a undergraduate student here at University of Texas at Austin. So it's my special privilege and joy to be back in this city where, you know, help me get that education and get started uh, for life at Samsung. <laughs> and my colleague here, Cece. Hey, everyone. How's everyone doing? We'll get you out of here soon for a cocktail soon. <laughs> <laughs> We're like standing between, you know, one hour of more conference and cocktails, so we'll keep this uh, uh, informative um, and uh, take questions afterwards. Uh, just being here at EWTS, I hear the word wearable constantly, and, and, and nothing really excites me more than in talking about wearables, especially, you know, the journey we've taken with the smartwatch, where we are, where we've been, and where we're headed. Just a little bit about the smartwatch market, and then we'll get the boring stuff out of the way. Uh, our friends at IDC are expecting the wearables, or especially the B2B wearable market, to grow at a double digit or over 21% CAGR from now through 2020. And what's really fueling the growth of the wearables in B2B space is really three simple things. Human performance, or enhancing human performance, worker safety, and worker health or wellness. These three things alone are driving the, the thinking process and adoption of wearables at workplace. You're probably thinking about it today at work uh, on how do I transform my business using wearables for work. And it's really, again, those three things. And rather than me telling you about how great the Samsung device is or, or what we're doing, I'd like to share with you a, a, a small case study uh, that we're working on, uh, a proof of concept uh, that we're working on with uh, Real Tinto. As you may know, Real Tinto is one of the largest global mining companies. They're number three in the world, over $40 billion in revenue. They're extracting and processing precious metals like aluminum and gold and copper and diamond and all the other elements out there. They have over 50,000 employees. And as a mining company, they're working in open pit mines, underground mines, and processing plants. How it all began, we talked about the why uh, from the speakers earlier. We met with the team, and they have about 14,000 uh, miners or workers, uh, field workers uh, in, in Salt Lake or Utah area. In 2017, this is directly from their CEO's annual report, they lost three of their colleagues. And before the accident and, and during and, and you know, after, their number one priority is safety of their workers. That is the why on why they are working with Samsung on adopting wearables for their workforce. Their goal is zero harm to the workforce, including zero casualties, especially zero fatalities. So let's talk about the hazardous environment of working in an open pit mine or underground mine or a, a, a very hot smelting processing facility. The environment, they're operating heavy machineries, right? They're working with machinery with tires that are as big as, I don't know, a couple times the size of my height. They're working in high heat, desert environment, uh, smelting plants with, again, high heat to melt those iron ores. And a lot of times they have workers in the field alone. The challenge that this problem this causes is the lack of real-time safety alerts, uh, the lack of worker fatigue awareness, or lack of individual communication tools for these workers that are in this dangerous environment. So like any good companies who, you know, who's looking for the number one safety of their workforce, they've already tried different wearables. Um, not all wearable projects went well for them. Uh, here's a couple reasons why, and here's also what they learned. Number one is data privacy, 
right? You know, we all talk about do we want to be monitored by Big Brother, right? You have the labor unions in, in certain uh, jurisdictions. There's all these sentiments and regulations and rules that govern the, uh, the collecting employees' data, and, and that's been a, a challenge or a hurdle for Rio Tinto. The second is adoption of the wearables. They simply hated wearing some of these devices uh, for various reasons, including the form factor of some of the devices that they were given to wear. And lastly, it was the functionality of these devices. They were very limited in what those devices did. So working with Samsung, I will turn it now over to my colleague, CC, who's worked with them directly on solving these challenges for Real Tinto. Yep, thanks, Simon Jin. Um, so as we build out our pilot with, with Rio Tinto, these are some of the top use cases that we really helped address for them. So blast zones is the first one. Um, Rio Tinto being a mining company, they do two blasts a day, and you can imagine that you know, this is a really dangerous environment. You don't want people wandering in and out of those um, blast zones. And so what they've, they've encountered in the past is that you have people accidentally driving or walking into those blast zones. And, and what we've built into our wearable solution is the ability to set um, geofences around those blast zones. And the administrator would get a, an alert whenever people wander um, into those, those geofenced um, blast zones. Um, the second one is instant notification. So Rio Tinto being you know, in the middle of Utah, um, and it's this giant, it's like a, a mini Grand Canyon, so it's got its own weather pattern. Um, so lightning strikes are actually very common at Rio Tinto, and whenever those, those occur, uh, what they do is they actually send out email notifications, which you can imagine people are not checking their emails at all times of the day. Um, and so one of the great things about our solution is we can have the administrator blast out an evacuation order or you know, a, a lightning strike alert, and the, the watch will buzz, and folks can take a look and know that there's a lightning strike coming. Um, and then the third one is lone worker. So you've got workers out in the field. They're, they're by themselves. And if for, for what, whatever reason, um, they get injured, they need to call for help. Um, we've got facility emergency numbers stored directly on the watch that folks can access very quickly and just get help. Um, and then in addition, um, we've got location data stored on the watch. So administrators, they can access their last known location and quickly send help to retrieve that person. Um, and then, so what's coming for the next phase is uh, more around health monitoring. Um, so stress management is one area that we're adding to our, our functionality. So you can imagine um, dangerous uh, work environments. They can create stress on workers. And so operating heavy machinery, you want to make sure that your employees are safe, that their well-being is you know, at a point that is safe for them to operate these equipment. And so we're adding functionality, and it's, it's based on heart rate variability data um, that you'll be able to see how, how stressed employees are um, and uh, send an alert for them to take a break, et cetera. Um, and then location services. So this is indoor location tracking with Beacon technology. Um, this is another area that was asked of us. Um, so Rio Tinto has these hot metals uh, smelter buildings that they want to be able to track employees on which floor, what area on that floor um, employees are wandering to. They want to make sure that, given this is a really dangerous environment, um, if you're not authorized to be in certain areas, they want to keep um, those employees out and, and safe. And um, the last section we want to cover is why Samsung? Um, there's you know, a lot of wearable solutions out there, so we want to quickly go through that. So why Samsung? Um, one, our watch is already a 
very popular consumer device um, because let's face it, it's really hard to get people to use new technology. Um, and I think people will be excited to, to use our watch. Um, so that's definitely number one. Um, two is because the software and hardware are made in-house at Samsung, um, we can really give you that integrated um, experience. And not to mention, um, as we're gathering requirements, um, as we're doing, we're gathering requirements now, we can actually influence the hardware product development team um, to build the additional sensors into the watches. Um, and then three, Samsung's great as an enterprise strategic partner. Um, as you know, we make a huge portfolio of products from visual displays to um, wearables to mobile um, to our Knox services, which keeps your systems um, secure and safe. And so we've got all of those products available and all of those work um, seamlessly together. So this is uh, an overview of all the core functionality that we have today as part of our, our uh, application on the uh, Galaxy Watch. And so I've mentioned some of these earlier, but to add, um, we've got voice messaging for very easy collaboration between um, colleagues. Uh, task management is another item, so you can track, you can assign tasks to um, employees and be able to track the progress made for those tasks. Um, and then geofencing, geolocation, you can set very custom geofencing around uh, danger zones, around um, different facility buildings, and being able to track entries and exits. Um, yeah, so of course, and all of this is hands-free, um, which makes it really easy for people to just use as they go. It, it can completely replace the, uh, the phone with our LTE devices. And so with that, I'll send it back to Wanjin to talk about the rest of this. Thank you. So the message that we want to share with you and, and our learnings is, yes, there are definitely barriers and challenges and, and, and a lot of other fun stuff coming your way in terms of uh, adopting wearables. Uh, but I want to reassure you that you know, it really does pay off in terms of enhancing the performance, the efficiencies, uh, but also if you have, if you're working in a hazardous environment, that worker safety, right? And, and at Samsung and our clients, uh, it's about that relationship. Uh, again, our earlier speaker spoke about the why. Another book that I really enjoy reading about Simon Sinek is, you know, the, the doing it together or the, or the journey together. And for us, that really makes sense for us. Uh, we're, we're a technology company at heart, and we will continue to make devices. But we are also embracing the ecosystem of why our mobile technology for your workforce. That includes partners working with us, and as well as our R&D labs across the world. And we can't do that without your partnership and without collab collaborating with you. We, we really want to be your industry partners. Uh, some of you probably have Samsung account managers working with your IT teams. Let them know on how, what kind of business challenges that you have that you think wearables can solve for you. Uh, don't feel like you have to do it alone. We will be there with you and with our ecosystem of partners, as well as your in-house technology experts. At the end of the day, when we do this right with you, it really is not a technology implementation, but really is solving your business challenges and transforming your business. Uh, with that, we have some time for questions.